This laboratory activity involves the experimental and analytical stress analysis of a cantilever aluminium tube subject to bending and torsion, either applied individually or in combination. The aluminium tube has a thin walled section. It is fixed at one end and free at the other end. The experimental rig also includes a computer running LabVIEW and Excel software, a DAQ system, three strain rosettes comprising of nine strain gauges, a pulley, two digital gauges, a rod of negligible weight which is attached to the free end of the tube, two hangers to hold the loads, and eight five kilogram loads. The deflections and stresses obtained experimentally have to be compared with the corresponding analytical results. For the analytical equations, you may refer to your lecture notes. Please read the laboratory notes before you attend the lab and read the instruction notes carefully before performing your experiment. You are reminded that all laboratories are potentially dangerous. Be careful with the weights. Do not drop them and put the slot of each load at a different position around the hanger. Do not play with the computer and the DAQ system because it might change their setup. Digital gauges are used to measure deflections. The probe or plunger moves perpendicular to the components being tested by either retracting or extending from the indicator's body. They can be set to measure in inch or in millimeter. This button is used to zero the gauge at the start of each test. Two digital gauges are located at the free end of the tube. On its left and right hand sides. They measure the left and right tip deflections respectively. We cannot measure stresses, however, we can measure strains using the strain gauges and then use the stress to strain relations to calculate the stresses. The aluminium tube has a thin wall section. When the tube is subject to a combined loading condition, at any point on its surface, There are three independent stress components, sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, and three independent strain components, epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. A strain gauge can only measure strains in one direction. Therefore, three strain gauges placed at different orientations Forming a strain rosettes are required for strain measurements. This is the schematic diagram of a typical strain rosette. Three strain rosettes at different inclinations are attached to the aluminium tube near the clamped end. Two at the top and one at the bottom. This picture shows only the rosettes located on the top surface. As shown, three strain rosettes 
at different inclinations are attached to the surface of the tube near the clamped end, two at the top and one at the bottom. The DAQ system converts the real physical data from the strain gauges into digital numeric values which can be processed by the computer. The DAQ hardware interfaces between the electronic signals received from the strain gauges and the computer. The DAQ hardware is controlled by the LabVIEW software which is installed in the computer. LabVIEW is an interactive program which can be used to receive, analyze and present data from a DAQ system. LabVIEW is a software product from National Instruments or NI, which is an American company. Since the students are more familiar with Microsoft products, the strain readings will be sent to Microsoft Excel for your lab view for post-processing. For the bending case, loads of 5 kg increments up to 20 kg are applied on each side of the tube. Delta is the tip deflection of the tube, which can be measured by the digital gauges. For a better accuracy, the average of the left and right tip deflections is used as the experimental tip deflection for each loading increment. Based on the theories of bending, the analytical tip deflection can be obtained using this equation. F is the total load applied, L is the length of the tube, E is the modulus of elasticity, and I is the second moment of area of the cross section of the tube. The analytical bending stress or in this case the axial stress, can be calculated using this equation. M is the applied bending moment, and Y is the coordinate of point A on the cross-section of the tube, where Y is equal to DO divided by 2. DO is the outer diameter of the tube. Since the strain reset is located at point A, the applied bending moment is equal to F multiplied by L minus L prime. For the pure torsion case, loads of 5 kg increments up to 20 kg are applied on each side of the tube in opposite direction. The direction of the load on the left hand side of the tube can be changed using this pulley. Theta is the angle of twist of the tube, which can be calculated using the measured deflection delta. Theta is equal to delta divided by h. h is the distance of each digital gauge from the center of the tube. Based 
on the theories of torsion. The analytical angle of twist is equal to T times L divided by G times J. T is the torque applied, L is the length of the tube, G is the shear modulus, and J is the polar second moment of area of the cross section of the tube. T, the torque applied, is equal to F times 2S. S is the distance of each load hanger from the center of the tube. The analytical shear stress on the surface of the tube is equal to T times R divided by J. R is the outer radius of the tube, which is equal to D O divided by 2. D O is the outer diameter of the tube. For the combined bending and torsion case, loads of 5 kg up to 20 kg are applied only on the right hand side of the tube. Delta L and delta R are the measured left and right tip deflections respectively. Theta is the angle of twist of the tube, which can be calculated using the measured tip deflections. Using the superposition rule, the corresponding analytical solution of the tube can be obtained by combining the solutions of a tube on the bending and a tube subject to pure torsion. You measure the left and right tip deflections for each loading increment using the digital gauges. However, you are required to take a strain readings just for the maximum load applied for each case and only from the first three gauges. The first three gauges form a 45 degree strain reset. where the X and Y axes are placed along the axis and the circumferential direction of the tube respectively. These equations are used to determine the experimental stress components using the measured strain components in conjunction with a 45 degree rosette. The related theory are covered in Chapter 6 of your lecture notes. These experimental stress and strain components can be compared with the corresponding analytical results. The related theories were explained in the previous slides. For more information, you may refer to your lecture notes.